today amendment uh, number 558 of the fiscal year 22 uh, National Defense Authorization Act. My bipartisan amendment with the support of Representative Ruiz and 33 other uh, bipartisan members, uh, my particular bill has several, uh, several more uh, co-sponsors and it's called the Major Richard Starr Act. And uh, Richard Starr advocated for this bill uh, for many years, unfortunately. He passed away due to his uh, illnesses, were, which were uh, combat related. Uh, this would expand eligibility to certain military retirees for concurrent receipt of veterans' disability compensation and retired pay or combat related special compensation. I believe we, our bill is probably 100, roughly 117 co sponsors, and we have a sponsor in the Senate as well. In the past, military service members found to have endured a service-connected disability could not collect their pension and disability pay in unison. To receive VA disability compensation, veterans had to forfeit their retirement benefits and pay back dollar for dollar the amount that would have been owed to them if they had received both benefits. In the fiscal year 2004, the National Defense Authorization Act the Congress created the Concurrent Retirement and Disability Pay Program. In doing so, veterans who are, were 100 percent disabled were authorized to receive both earned benefits, known as concurrent receipt, for the first time ever. Since then, the law has expanded the eligibility to receive military retirement pay and their VA disability pay concurrently to military retirees with 20 or more years of service and a 50% or higher disability rating. Under current law, concurrent receipt for military retirees who have a disability rating of 50% or higher was phased in through uh, 2014. That was uh, a, a great initiative of my father, Congressman Mike Bilirakis. Uh, but that's just a subsection, and, I'm a, uh, and I do have H.R. 303. Many of you have co-sponsored that. That takes care of everyone, but this is just a subsection of this, and uh, I want to go further, if I if I may. While this certainly marks tremendous progress, medically retired veterans with less than 20 years of service who were wounded in combat must still offset their DOD retirement pay by their VA disability compensation. I think that's very unfair. Many of these veterans have the full intention; they had the intention of serving for 20 years or more and gain full retirement benefits, but through no fault of their own, were unable to do their service and sacrifice in the line of duty. So in other words, they were injured in the line of duty, so they couldn't serve the 20 years. Therefore, under current law, they're disqualified from receiving uh, both their disability and their, uh, and their pension. This group of retired veterans, also known as Chapter 61 retirees, are arguably the most at risk because of their complex combat injuries and are just as deserving as those who serve greater than 20 years of service. Uh, by creating the CRDP, I firmly believe the Congress admitted uh, that offset requirement of disabled veterans was wrong. Approximately 550,000 military retirees are eligible to receive both military retirement pay and disability compensation but are prohibited under the current guidelines of this program. So the, the full amount is 550, uh, but I'm only, I'm only addressing uh, between 40,000 and 60,000 veterans, so it's a subsection of that. In my view, I see these veterans as essentially being taxed for their service and sacrifice because they were deemed service-connected disabled. My amendment would remove that tax and the disparity between those combat disabled veterans and the rest of the population. My standalone bill and its Senate companion have received a wide margin of, uh, again, bipartisan support amongst members, again, bicameral support uh, in this Congress and in past Congresses, as well as the support of uh, many veterans service organizations, including the American Legion, the VFW, DAV, VVA, uh, the AMVETS, Military Officers Association of America, Fleet Reserve Association, American Ex-Prisoners of War, and the Association of the Navy, and I'm sure that none of them oppose this. None of these organizations do. 
Thank you again for the opportunity to testify on my amendment, and I look forward to the discussion today. And I yield back, Mr. Thank Chairman. You very Appreciate much. it. And the last person on this panel is Mr.